No? Yeah, by golly, that's a microphone. Sandy Sanders made the terrible mistake of letting me run the clicker for that last thing. <laughs> and this thing is uh, touchy. So uh, what an appropriate song uh, for this, for the nice message. Uh, send the light, send the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Because tonight's message is about uh, the evangelism work or the mission support work this congregation does. Um, just by way of an update, uh, congregation made quite a change in 2018. Uh, in 2000, this year, uh, we greatly increased... Uh, the number, and you'll see here in just a second the presentation, greatly increased the number of mission works that we're supporting out of state. Uh, we added three, yeah, three new, uh, entirely new overseas mission support works that we're uh, helping to fund. And we did so just in a, just in kind of an introductory way. It was just a one-year commitment that we made uh, to kind of test the waters with these specific uh, works, get to know them a little bit. So that, that leads into, you know, one of the purposes of giving this uh, update is we'd like to hear back from the congregation about what are your thoughts about these works that we're supporting. Um, do these seem like good works? Do you uh, this is something you get behind. And, and even beyond that, from hearing that, it's our hope that uh, this can uh, grow to something beyond just, uh, just this level of involvement we have. We, again, we've only made a one-year commitment to these particular ministries, but you know, there's, uh, we'll come up on budget time again here pretty soon. We'll consider these again, and it's possible that we'll... Uh, be supporting these same ones here again in 2019 or, or, or beyond. We'll, we'll see how all that plays out. But there is opportunity. One of the reasons I want to communicate to you, in, these, in many of these missions that we're supporting, there is opportunity for members of our congregation to join in uh, actual physically and physically with the labor. Or perhaps, if, you, if, if that's not in the cards for you, then perhaps it's something that you see here that you want to, uh, that you can get behind and want to support more fully uh, on your own. There's lots of options here, but part of this update is to, to let you know of the good work that's being done that our, that our congregation is helping with. Uh, then we've got several of these we're going to go through. Uh, this is the list of what we're supporting uh, the year in 2018. And I'm going to go through these, each one individually, but just uh, let you know where there's uh, missionary work in New Zealand, uh, Bible education in South Africa, uh, personal evangelism training here in the United States, uh, missionary work to the deaf in Mexico City. Uh, we have our own youth in-state and out-state mission trips that's coming up. Uh, and then we've got a couple that were uh, just add-ons by special requests. There's the uh, Nuuli uh, Church in uh, American Samoa. I think I said that right. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, a program called Compassion uh, Haitian Leaders, which is a charitable work of the men that's going to be speaking at our men's retreat this year. So we've given a little support to that. So let's just talk about these one at a time. And the first I have on the list is support of uh, New Zealand missionary Chris and Michelle Hurd. Uh, and it's kind of interesting how we came to be ac acquainted with Chris. Uh, Chris is Chris and Michelle, the parents of Chantel Swain. That's the wife of the preacher over at South Anchorage. So Chris and Michelle made the trip to the uh, U.S. for doing, uh, seeking funday, funding for the ongoing you know, continuation of the missionary work in New Zealand. And so while they're in the U.S., they decided to come up to see grandkids and even see their own, ki <laughs> even see their own daughter while they're seeing their grandkids. And uh, while they were up here, they went ahead and made a few, you know, kind of uh, stops, uh, including at our congregation, talking about the missionary work that, uh, that, that Chris and Michelle are doing there. And we were impressed enough to go ahead and uh, help support that. So 
uh, Chris and, uh, and uh, Michelle and their family. That's a picture of their family there, short of Chantel, because she's married off with her husband now. Uh, but they've spent four years in New Plymouth. That's in the North Island of uh, New Zealand. Uh, they spent t uh, four years working at the congregation there and uh, having, having actually pretty good success. New Zealand is a difficult mission field. It's a, uh, it's a place that's pretty, uh, it's pretty secular. Uh, matter of fact, Chris tells the, uh, tells the story that uh, uh, the government is pretty uh, secular. When he was coming to talk to us, you know, several months ago now, he talked about a few years ago, the government ran an ad campaign, and they would put posters on the side of buses and stuff, and uh, uh, this, this ad campaign would include uh, sayings like, there probably isn't a God, so why don't you just go for it, you know, with your life type of thing, right? That was their ad, com ad campaign. And uh, needless to say, uh, Christians were appalled at that ad campaign, but it just, it's just an indication of where the country is at in terms of the secularism. But, despite that, um, they're doing good work there. And they've just finished up a evangelism campaign. They knocked on over 700 doors, had over 300 conversations, and they've got uh, numerous studies that are going on right now. Uh, like I said, this just wrapped up. Uh, so uh, they've had a group of, I, th I think it's four people that... Uh, uh, came from Freed Hardeman University to help them help them do this, and they're they're very enthusiastic and very excited about the opportunity for more mission work. Matter of fact, to the point where um, it's it's a place that we've uh, that we've talked about considered for a youth mission trip, and they're and they're particularly pumped for the ex for the possibility of uh, of doing more evangelism work there. Uh, in addition to preaching there, Chris also, uh, he has a radio program that broadcasts in New Zealand and, uh, and in Australia, and it's called Listen to the Bible or something, something like that. I, I had it written down, but I failed to bring it up with me. Uh, he's, and he teaches marriage classes and Bible classes. Uh, Don and I on a vacation, we had an had a opportunity to spend some more one-on-one -on -one time with uh, Chris and Michelle there. And again, came away really impressed. A congregation this year is supporting this, them with $2,400, uh, which, is, which is a nice level. It's not, you know, it's, things are expensive in New Zealand. <laughs> so $2,400 is, is a nice level of support, uh, but uh, they can certainly use more. Matter of fact, they recently lost a donor, so they could use some more. This is an opportunity that, uh, in New Zealand specifically, I know that they would be enthusiastic about uh, having members of our congregation uh, come and, and join them in doing some evangelism work or some work there. So again, perhaps um, informally right now, but perhaps in the future more formally, perhaps there's an opportunity for, for us to engage in some uh, you know, planned mission activity with New Zealand, or, or one of these other uh, 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 works that are listed here. Next one I want to talk about is the Southern Africa Bible College. It was just before, um, it wasn't even a year ago, several months ago, Kirk Eason, again, another, um, he's a, uh, he actually lives in Houston, and he was up here in uh, Alaska doing family vac vacation. But while he's up here, he decided to enlist some support for the Southern Africa Bible College. So he came and talked to us about some of the, some of the good work that's going on at the Southern Africa Bible College. Uh, and we were impressed. We were impressed with the work that they were doing there. The college has been in place since 1966. It's in the town of Benoni, which is a suburb of Johannesburg, which is a ridiculously large city in South Africa. This this tree here that I have the picture of, um, it's a big chestnut tree, uh, and I have it here because in the early days of the college, this is where they would teach classes. They would gather underneath the chestnut tree, and they would open up their Bibles, and they would teach uh, uh, the, the class classes underneath the chestnut tree, which is still on campus, but it, it's a cool tradition of theirs. Uh, since then, it's grown considerably, and 
Uh, they have over 1,500 uh, students that have attended now, 40, about 45 at a time. They have six full-time faculty that are working there, and all of their faculty are South Africans. Uh, none of their, none of their full-time faculty are Americans on loan or anything like this. Is, part of what impressed us with this is this is it's so it's such a homegrown effort. Matter of fact, their emphasis is on teaching graduates so they can taking them from the from the bush or from the outlying uh, uh, villages coming in, getting a formal education, and then returning home to preach to their home congregations or build new congregations in, in where they come from. Uh, they, they, their, uh, their format is not to train them up to bring them into to the U.S. and then stay resident in the U.S. They, they stay in South Africa or go to other uh, countries uh, around there preaching the gospel, but actually has been very successful. Uh, local congregations provide most of, of the support of the congregation, uh, and, and Kirk was telling me that uh, the local congregation support has grown, to, uh, has grown by 70% over the last seven years, and to the point where they're, they're, they're two, let's see, I guess they're top Contributor is from a, a U.S. Congreg uh, congregation, but their second and their th third largest contributors are from local congregations there in South Africa. Uh, the Memorial Church of Christ in Houston is overseeing their, the U.S. contributions, and that's that's where Kirk Eason, the man that visited with us, that's where he worships, and he, he so he's kind of the one that's helping to oversee that, and the one that was explaining all this. Uh, they likewise have uh, opportunity for uh, workers. Matter of fact, Kurt was telling me, I, I just talked to him on the phone a couple of days ago, they're planning a 12-day trip. Uh, uh, their congregation is planning a 12-day trip in March, which is about concurrent with our spring break, by the way. But they're planning a 12-day trip uh, for teacher training workshops, and, and they would welcome any kind of... Uh, uh, Adult workers that are willing to come, and uh, you know, skilled workers or unskilled workers, uh, they they would welcome that. So, again, this is paying some benefits, and uh, I think in some opportunity of just an awareness for our congregation about what type of works uh, we could get involved with, and we're supporting again with twenty four hundred dollars, just like over at New Zealand, twenty four hundred dollars in two thousand. Uh, in 2018. This is a short video. The work is growing. Um, uh, many souls are being converted. Uh, on average, we baptize around 25 people a year, and the congregation is growing and doing really, really well. At the moment, we are doing well. We managed to, in the three months' time, we managed to baptize uh, over 40 people. And we, we, we are quite doing well. So SEPS has been key in terms of, of, of equipping us to actually go out there and, and, and preach, not only preaching to the people out there, but actually strengthening the congregation itself because it doesn't make sense for us to go and preach outside and then when the people come inside, they don't have a strong foundation or, or, or a solid thing that we are giving them. I'm at a congregation. We've, during my tenure there, we've appointed elders as well as deacons and we are now very involved in church planting and we've involved as a congregation with 22 ministries that are very active and we're also very involved in the school English um, teaching program at a very uh, difficult underprivileged school. It really helped me um, on the knowledge base. Uh, before I came to the college I used to be involved in preaching but I would say I didn't know what I was talking about. I was an amateur in scripture and I remember twisting scriptures and saying things that the scriptures weren't saying. But right now I'd say that the, the, the college has molded me, shaped me, equipped me, strengthened my knowledge and uh, that has helped me to become an effective preacher of the truth. And on a personal spiritual note, it has helped me know what I believe in and to stand firm in that. Just to give you an example, 
where I preached, I got the congregation. It was about 100 and less members. But I got there, and through your help, through everything that you've done, the congregation is growing. Now we are about 200 and 210, and we're still growing. So that is just to show you that your contribution was not in vain. Your work in the Lord was not in vain, and it was worth it because the church is growing. And I say thank you. Thank you. You are all extraordinary and God will bless you beyond what you can ask and think. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Okay. And again, just a quick little, little, we were impressed with uh, the things that Kirk taught us and uh, uh, about the college. So moving on, Fishers of Men Evangelism Training. Um, this is uh, we're providing $2,400 support to the Fishers of Men program, too. And if you, if you go online and you Google Fishers of Men, you get all sorts of things, right? If you want to go see this website, fishersofmen.net. That's the, that's the site you want to go. But it's a work that's been going on since 1977. It originated in Naperville, Illinois, but it's now under the oversight of the Cordova Church, uh, Church of Christ in, uh, in, in Cordova, Tennessee. The, what this program is, it, it's an emphasis on person-to-person -person evangelism, one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And many of you here participated. We had a 12-week training that, was, uh, that took place here in late 2016. And we had a, a, enormous uh, a, attendance from this congregation. So once a week for 12 weeks... Tim Wilkes would fly from Tennessee to Alaska, and he'd spend four days here. I guess he'd go home for the weekend, and he would come back up and do it again for 12 weeks, training us to teach the gospel. And it was awesome. It, it really was awesome training. The, 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 the materials that they left behind are solid Bible instructional materials. I've used them several times uh, myself, and uh, they're good, effective materials. But, but the training that they give is really valuable in, in teaching you how to do it, giving you the encouragement that you can do it, and building the enthusiasm to, go, to actively go, uh, go teach the gospel. Uh, they provide this 12 weeks of training, by the way, is free of charge. So... You can imagine what 12 round-trip tickets from Tennessee to Alaska was. And it was the dead of winter, so I'm sure it's a little cheaper than that. But uh, that's pretty significant. Um, but they, they, that's, that's their ministry. Now, again, we've helped them this year with $2,400. We'll see what next year brings. But uh, I think we've already, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, we're, we're looking at, I think we're on the schedule to have these guys come back and 19, 20? Okay. So in another year, year and a half-ish, then uh, they'll be back for another uh, round of training up here. Uh, in the meantime, we do have a local group here that's uh, been continuing to meet the dip netters, we call them. Um, the dip netters meets uh, every uh, last Sunday of the month. Uh, every month, and we use the huddle up in 25, 26 there. And uh, what do the dip netters do? Well, we, we meet for mutual encouragement, talk about the, uh, what kind of studies we have going on, what kind of uh, the people we're talking uh, to. Uh, uh, we pick each other up and, and uh, encourage each other when we're not having any success uh, uh, setting up studies. And it's a nice support group, and also we talk about you know, the mechanics of teaching. You know, what do I do when I get in this situation? Uh, so that's been uh, really beneficial and a, a nice ongoing group. Uh, great work here. Uh, again, $2,400 is what we've supported them in 2018. I, I'm, I'm, I seem to recall we had some support in 2017 as well, but I don't remember the dollar amount. Youth mission trips. Uh, 2019 and 18, I'll talk about in just a second, but we've, since 2013, we've had an annual youth mission trip. Uh, and the plan when we rolled that out in 2013 was every four years we would go overseas. In 2015, we went to, uh, the youth went to Bulgaria. So that means in 2019, 
we're looking at going uh, uh, another overseas mission trip. And why every four years? Well, it's the mission trip. This, this youth mission trip specifically is for grades 9 through 12. Those have completed grades 9 through 12. So you do it every four years. So every high schooler has a chance sometime during that four years of going on an overseas mission trip. Uh, in the interim years, we do an, an in-state mission trip. And these have been, these have been super uh, successful and I, I think highly beneficial to our youth going all the way back to 2013. 2018, uh, truth be told, we're, 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 we're struggling in 2018. We don't have a location uh, set yet, still trying to get that nailed down. We actually have more certainty around 2019 than we do 2018. For our overseas trip, uh, Maury and Christy Mayhew are leading that. Uh, they've got Josh and Carrie Percheski uh, uh, helping them. And uh, they've come back with a recommendation that we uh, look at a work in Honduras. Uh, and so we've, got, we've still got to do some evaluating to see, you know, confirm that that's what we want to do. But that looks very exciting. Uh, but if those don't work out, we also have, um, you know, opportunities to do New Zealand or South Africa, you know, the, the works that I've already presented tonight. But uh, stay tuned. We, we, we made more progress on 2019 than we have on 2018. But... Uh, we're not done with 2018 yet. Uh, the, the specific purpose of the youth mission trips is to give our youth an opportunity to experience the church in different locations, an opportunity to share God's Word, and an opportunity to build Christian bonds across, you know, out, outside, of, outside of the mother congregation here. And then uh, the last of our, of our budgeted ones, if you will, was uh, in uh, Mexico City. Uh, Mike and Kim Tr Cantrell are uh, working, and Mike is a deaf man. Uh, I don't know if Kim's deaf or not. She's likewise also, also deaf. Uh, so they're both uh, working in Mexico City, uh, uh, teaching, teaching the gospel there. So uh, he's, he's been, Mike and Kim have been there working for three years. Uh, they spent a little time here back in 2012 and 2013 working with our own members. So, so we, we know Mike and Kim, and uh, they've, uh, you know, they've worked. We know them. They know, they know us. Uh, so likewise, we're giving them $2,400 in support. And I believe uh, their intention is to stay there uh, working in Mexico City through 2020 is my understanding. Uh, Mike is a graduate of the Sunset School of Preaching, and this is his first uh, first assignment coming out of a coming out of Sunset. Uh, so again, uh, some more opportunity uh, perhaps for uh, for involvement from our own. And then lastly, there's a couple of other. Um, these are just requests that came in uh, along the way. We we uh, most recently. Of the, uh, the Nuuli Church, uh, am I saying that correct? Nuuli, Nuuli, close. I'm close. Um, it's in America Samoa. I didn't know where America Samoa was. <laughs> Google helped, and it's uh, the village of Nuuli is is getting close to Australia and New Zealand uh, down there. Uh, but it's 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 a growing vibrant congregation and we have ties there from a uh, uh, Philomari uh, Taino it's her father is one of the elders there matter of fact I think uh, visiting visiting uh, uh, in Anchorage right now uh, the church is growing uh, they have need of a of a van to help uh, pick up you know it's not a not a wealthy area so they have a need of a of a van to pick up and and try to bring bring members to to worship. So they were re, they asked for some support and our congregation uh, gave them two thousand dollars to help in the purchase of of a van. Uh, the other one that I have a picture of here is a program called, frankly, a program I'd never heard of before: Compassion Haitian Leaders. Um, William Davis is brother in Christ uh, that. He's going to be our men's retreat speaker in, uh, in this fall, in October. 
And this is uh, Compassion Haitian Leaders is a, is a work that several churches of Christ throughout, mostly through the southeast U.S., have joined together uh, to provide uh, charitable uh, work in, uh, in Haiti. And so kind of in support of that, and since uh, Brother Davis is going to be uh, coming here speaking our men, we, we, we contributed $300 to that uh, charitable work. So that's, that's kind of the presentation I have, guys. I, I, I hope you're enthused about, about the work that the congregation is doing and about this uh, kind of new direction about reaching out in a bigger way out beyond uh, Anchorage, out beyond Alaska to teach the gospel. Uh, again, we'd, the elders would welcome your feedback, what you feel about these specific ministries, or about in general, about us you know, reaching out uh, you know, just beyond state boundaries. Uh, and also let us know about your ideas about uh, uh, willingness, eagerness, what you think about uh, trying to build up some type of a, a greater mission uh, uh, plan. Uh, among our congregation in future years. So that's the message I have for you tonight. Uh, as always, we want to extend the invitation uh, to any of anyone that uh, in this congregation, uh, we're, we're family, we're a body of uh, believers that uh, we want to be characterized as a loving, compassionate people to set us apart from, from the world. And your brothers and your sisters here, if you have any, any needs, any personal prayer requests, any personal needs, your brothers and sisters uh, in Christ uh, would love to help share your burden if, if, if it's become uh, too much for you. Or if you're uh, in need of hearing more about the news of Christ, if you want to be part of that uh, body that is... That's going to be joining our Father in heaven. Then we're available, and we would be love. We would just love talking to you about that. Let's uh, let's all stand and, and sing.